So as you live in the Bay Area and have thoughts about where to go after you retire, do you want to live in a place with a strong cultural scene and beaches or live in a more rural area with tons of incredible vineyards? Are you trying to decide between Sonoma County or Napa County? I'll break down both of them to help you save time and research and figure out which is the best one for you. By the end, you'll have a complete guide about retiring in both counties and I'll even share with you the one which I chose and also give you an idea of why you shouldn't choose one or the other. So what are the main differences between retiring in Sonoma County versus Napa County? First of all, let's talk about the location, how easy it is to get there, as well as visit other places from either of the two counties. So let's start with Sonoma, how is that located? Well, if you're driving to Sonoma County anywhere from the Bay Area, you'll likely drive on the 101 from San Francisco, heading to Sonoma, Healdsburg, or Santa Rosa, and it generally involves crossing the Golden Gate Bridge. And you'll generally be on US 101 heading north. And we expect to drive to Sonoma to take about one to one and a half hours, Healdsburg's about one and a half hours, and then Santa Rosa just over an hour. Obviously, if you live in Marin, then the journey times will be reduced because you'd eliminate the need to cross over the Golden Gate Bridge. For anyone that makes the trip regularly, be looking forward to the end of the wide roading project, which has been going on for literally as long as I can remember. The Narrows project, which is in Petaluma, is adding a carpool lane in both directions for a 16 mile stretch that will mean there's a carpool lane all the way from San Francisco to Santa Rosa, which will be a huge incentive to not travel on your own in the car. I mean, I hesitate to say when it's due to be finished, but I believe it's in 2025. Clearly, if you're coming from the South Bay, you need to add more time to get through San Francisco. Although if you live somewhere like Redwood City, you'll usually cross over the San Mateo Bridge, meaning that the drive to Sonoma can take, I don't know, probably two to two and a half hours, and to Healdsburg you can add an extra half hour. I mean, the great thing about Sonoma County now is that you do have an option that doesn't involve the car, which is the Smart Train, which stands for the Sonoma Marin Area Rail Transit. So this currently runs from Larkspur to the Santa Rosa Airport and is revolutionized travel within Sonoma and Marin counties. It currently takes an hour, 50 minutes to get from Larkspur to the end of the line just by the airport in Sonoma County. So once that extension is done to Healdsburg, it will be an effortless scenic train ride taking 90 minutes, which will be great for people visiting Sonoma. And also for people who live in places like Petaluma, Santa Rosa, Windsor, and Healdsburg, all of whom will have a station which will be a five to 10 minute drive from their home, if not closer. It will also provide a ton of recreational opportunities for you to take your bike one way and then ride back. For example, I recently rode from Healdsburg to Larkspur with some buddies and then got the train back to the airport, which is just a 10 mile then hop back to Healdsburg. For anyone that is interested in moving to the Sonoma Coast, then the only option is the car. And depending on where you go, the times can start to get pretty long pretty quickly. So now let's talk about the buses. I'm definitely not an expert on the buses, but I do know there's a pretty good bus service from various parts of Sonoma to SFO. In fact, the airport of service recently got purchased by Groom Transportation, which has upgraded certain elements of the service. I mean, it's, it's not the fast option, but for about $35 each way, you can enjoy a relaxed trip to the airport and then save yourself a fortune on airport parking fees. So now let's talk about Napa. If you're driving to Napa County from anywhere in the Bay Area, you'll likely have to navigate on Highway 80 and Highway 29. I mean, from San Francisco, heading to Napa, Yountville, or St. Helena, you'll typically cross the Bay Bridge over to I-80, and then you'll go on 37 and then take the road north, the 29, which ends up in Calistoga. I mean, you can expect to drive to Napa to take around one and a half to two hours. For residents of Marin County, it's, again, it's closer. Times are reduced by probably half an hour because you can avoid going over the Bay Bridge. For frequent travellers, the journey can definitely be impacted by the bottlenecks on 37 and the slow pace of 29 as you're going north up towards St Helena. And this is especially during the weekends. I mean, Highway 37 is a crucial route and it's notorious for heavy traffic and congestion, often exacerbated by ongoing construction and flooding issues. Not to mention Sonoma Raceway if it's a race weekend. It's the equivalent of the Petaluma Narrows for getting up to Sonoma, but at the moment there is no solution to the problems of the congestion on the 37. So while Napa currently lacks 
a direct train service like Sonoma Smart Train, a new airport shuttle service has recently been launched, providing a convenient alternative for residents and visitors. There's a local operator, Puri, who the owners of a limo tour company, has introduced the Wine Country Airporter. And this shuttle service offers transportation to um, SFO, and it started on May the 1st, I believe. And the cost is about $70 per person each way with a discounted rate for seniors and for children. And this is definitely a great additional option if you live in Napa County and are looking for you know, a stress-free and direct route to the airport. But do you know something even better than a new service to the airport? If you subscribe to my channel to receive new videos like this one and you'll get updates about living in Sonoma and Napa County. I promise you that if you subscribe, I'll continue to bring you more and more videos on everything you need to know about these two counties from lifestyle to new arrivals to the real estate market, things to do and much more. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So now let's talk about the weather. I mean, you may be surprised, but there is a big difference between the weather is the diversity of their climates, which can typically impact how you live, especially for those who are more active and enjoy outdoor activities. Sonoma County based on a range of climates due to its varied geography from the cool coastal regions to the warmer inland valleys. I mean, coastal areas like Bodega Bay offer a refreshing break from the summer heat with average temperatures around, I don't know, 60, 65, making them ideal for hiking, biking, or, or simply enjoying the outdoors when inland areas become too hot. In contrast, Napa County tends to be uniformly warm with much less variation. There's obviously less respite from the summer heat, which can average 85 to 90 degrees in places like Napa and St. Helena. And St. Helena is actually one of the warmer places just because along with Calistoga, they're the two most northerly places in Napa Valley. So within Sonoma County, the town of Sonoma and Healdsburg experience warm, dry summers with temperatures often reaching, I know, 85, 90 degrees, where Sebastopol is known for its unique microclimates, which can have varying conditions within short spaces within the overall area of Sebastopol, offering more moderate temperatures and occasional cool breezes. I mean, Petaluma is that much closer to the coast and enjoys cool evenings in summer with temperatures averaging, I know, 75 to 80 during the daytime and often experiencing fog that swirls up from the Petaluma Gap in the mornings and the evenings. I mean, this microclimate can significantly impact your lifestyle as many days are cool and foggy. For instance, a friend of mine who moved to Petaluma from Larkspur was surprised to find that there were probably only 10 days a year when it was warm enough to sit outside in Petaluma in the evening, compared to living in Larkspur where he could live outside for many days in the summer evenings. I mean, this contrasts sharply with the more prevalent indoor-outdoor living enjoyed in parts of Sonoma County. I mean, if you are looking at your options on where to move to within Sonoma County, then definitely consider the climate. If you're moving to Napa, the weather's much more consistent across the county, so you don't need to bear it in mind to the same extent. And despite Sonoma County's overall reputation for a Mediterranean climate, the cooler mornings in Sonoma County are a refreshing contrast to the typically mild Bay Area mornings, with winter temperatures often dipping into the 30s and definitely the 40s, bringing, you know, a true sense of the seasons and you get the vibrant fall colours, which I personally really love. And Napa County has got the same sense of the seasons, but the mornings will typically heat up that bit quicker. So how different are the lifestyles? I mean, if you are thinking of retiring to either Sonoma or Napa, then the chances are that you are a food and wine lover and those interests are high on your list. So there's no question that both counties have a lot to offer, but there are some important differences. Similarly, if you're an outdoor enthusiast, both counties have got a wide range of outdoor activities, including hiking, cycling, and other activities that you can enjoy. When it comes to wine, Sonoma and Napa are both renowned for their world-class wine regions. But the wine country experience in Napa or Sonoma County, it will be slightly different. I mean, Napa County is known for its high-end luxury wineries, many of which are housed in sort of the grand estates with sweeping views of the valleys. I mean, these wineries often require reservations and offer very structured tastings. For some reason I've never understood, most Napa wineries won't actually allow you to bring food to have a picnic 
while tasting wine, even if they don't sell food. I mean, Napa's obviously known for its Cabernet Sauvignon, which thrives in warm, dry climate with some of the most famous wineries in the world, such as Opus One and Silver Oak, having winery operations there. I mean, are these wines better? I mean, that's definitely subjective. And I also know that there are numerous vineyards in Sonoma that actually sell their grapes to Napa wineries because they know they can get more money for the same fruit by selling them to a Napa winery rather than the Sonoma winery. So while the Sonoma tasting experience has definitely become a lot more formal over the years with many of Sonoma's wineries now also requiring reservations, Sonoma County can offer a more relaxed and laid back approach to wine tasting. I mean, the other great thing about the Sonoma region is that it's got a great diversity with over 400 wineries producing a wide range of varietals from the coastal Sauvignon Blancs and Pinot Noirs to the more robust wines made from Cabernet and Zinfandel further inland. I mean, many Sonoma wineries are still family owned and operated and generally offer more intimate experience for visitors. So what are the differences in the food? I mean, it's always dangerous to generalize, but I'm going to do it anyway. Like many things in Napa County, there's a bigger focus on the more traditional upscale dining experience, where Sonoma County's high-end restaurants tend to be much more focused on the farm-to-table experience. Napa County definitely wins the battle of the Michelin star restaurants, the most famous of which is Thomas Keller's three-star French Laundry. Napa definitely boasts its fair share of Michelin star restaurants, including the restaurant at the Auberge de Soleil, Bouchon in Yountville, Kenzo in Napa, Charter Oak, Press, as well as Farmstead in St Helena. I mean, over the past few years, Sonoma County's definitely started to catch up, largely because of the development of the food scene in and around Healdsburg, which is more than its fair share of Michelin star restaurants. And we've got Single Thread and now Cyrus, technically in Geyserville. I mean, I feel that Sonoma County food scene is developing so quickly, hardly a month goes by without a, an interesting new restaurant launching, which is, which is awesome if you live here. But what about the outdoor lifestyle in both places? Well, let's start with hiking. Sonoma County probably has a more diverse range of trails, given it has locations for hiking at the coast with the stunning Sonoma Coast State Park and in the Russian River among the redwoods around Armstrong Woods. And then further inland, places like Lake Sonoma in Healdsburg or Jack London Park in Glen Ellen. So it's got a really diverse range of hiking trails. Napa County also has got a ton of hiking trails throughout the county, including the popular Skyline Wilderness Park and the Oatmill Mine Trail. One standout, however, is the Robert Lewis Stevenson State Park, which offers a variety of hiking trails, including the 10-mile hike up and around Mount St Helena, which is, which is a great hike that gives you amazing views across Napa Valley. As with the wines and the weather, I feel there's a greater diversity of cycling in Sonoma County, largely because we've got everything from the dry valleys of places like Dry Creek Valley to the redwoods of the Russian River, and then the ocean alongside Highway 1. I mean, I've ridden in and around St Helena on numerous occasions over the summer great rides that you can take out towards Lake County and Lake Berryessa, or of course you can go west over the ridges into Sonoma County. I mean, both places definitely have a lot to offer if you're a keen cyclist. If water is your thing, then Sonoma County is the place for you. It's got the Russian River, offering a variety of water sports, including kayaking, canoeing, or grabbing a cold bottle of wine and floating down the river. And with that being said, Napa has Lake Berryessa, which is popular with you know boats and jet skis, so they both have something to offer. So now let's talk about healthcare. If you are looking to retire in either Sonoma or Napa, then understanding the healthcare options is, is obviously important. In Sonoma, Santa Rosa is definitely the healthcare centre of excellence because it's got the large Sutter Hospital and Medical Centre, which provides comprehensive care with 24 by 7 emergency, specialty areas like neurology, cardiology, surgical centres, senior care resources, etc. And we've also now got the Kaiser Permanente Medical Centre, which opened in Santa Rosa in 2019, offering, again, a similar range of services and like over 30 specialties. On top of that, most cities have smaller district hospitals, so a lot of your routine healthcare needs can be met right on your doorstep. Napa County also boasts top-tier facilities, including the Adventist Health in St Helena, renowned for comprehensive cardiac care, advanced surgical services and holistic wellness programmes. Additionally, the Queen of the Valley Medical Centre in Napa provides great healthcare with focus on advanced oncology treatments, as well as orthopaedic 
and state-of-the-art diagnostic imaging services. In addition to those facilities, Napa County is home to other several small and notable healthcare facilities that you would almost certainly find beneficial. The Napa Valley Medical Group offers a wide range of specialist services and primary care options, ensuring comprehensive health care coverage regardless of where you live. And then you've got Kaiser Permanente uh, Napa Medical Offices, which provide integrated healthcare services with a focus on preventative care and chronic disease management. If you live in Calistoga or St Helena, then it's also just as easy to get to Santa Rosa's medical facilities if that works better for you. So whether you live in Napa or Sonoma, for more advanced specialty care, you've got UCSF, you've got Marin General and Stanford's medical systems, which are easily accessible and probably within a 70 to 90 minute drive. So both counties benefit from easy access to the amazing facilities in the Bay Area. So what about real estate in Sonoma and Napa counties? Well, regardless of what type of home you're looking for, both Napa and Sonoma counties will likely have some good options. If you are looking for urban living, then in Napa County, you will be most likely drawn to the town of Napa, where there's everything from condos to suburban homes to wine country estates. And the overall price of real estate is a little bit higher in Napa County with median prices being around 900,000 compared to Sonoma's 800,000. However, if you don't like the idea of living in Napa Town with a population of 80,000, there are, there are limited options for you if you are looking in the sub million dollar range. If you are looking for a trophy wine country estate, then there's a lot of cash air about buying a place in Napa County, but it will definitely cost you more on a like-for-like -like basis compared to buying somewhere in Sonoma County. I mean, the sky's the limit when it comes to the price of a high-end Napa property. For example, there are 45 properties on the market right now in Sonoma and Napa for over 10 million, and 26 of those are in Napa County. I mean, the good thing about Sonoma County is that if your budget is less than a million, then you have so many more different options for where you could find a home. For example, you'd be able to find a property for less than a million dollars in all the major cities such as Petaluma, Santa Rosa, Hillsburg, Sebastopol and Sonoma. If you are looking for a high-end wine country property then you're probably drawn to areas around Sonoma or Hillsburg where the majority of the high-end estate homes are located. For example, if we look at the homes that sold since January the 1st, 2023, there have been 12 homes in Sonoma and Napa selling for over $10 million. I mean, five of those are in Sonoma, and seven are in Napa. All five of the Sonoma County homes are either in Healdsburg or Sonoma. So that, that tells you what you need to know. By the way, if you are moving to Sonoma County from out of the area, make sure to grab my Sonoma County relocation guide. I'll put a link in the description below. There you'll find everything you need to know before moving here. I give you a breakdown of the area, the things to do, the different neighborhoods, and way more. So make sure to check it out. So who should and who shouldn't live in Sonoma County versus Napa County. Well, it's obviously a very personal choice, but if you don't enjoy the heat and you want some options for places to live where the weather is more temperate, then you'll likely find more suitable options in Sonoma County. And it is always dangerous to generalize, but there is a difference in the types of people who live in Sonoma versus those who live in Napa. Someone once described the difference between Sonoma and Napa counties as being a bit like LA versus San Francisco. If you want the glitz, the glamour, and the showbiz, you'll probably prefer the Napa lifestyle. However, if you're looking for a more laid-back lifestyle where it's less about what you look like or how much money you have or and more about who you are, then Sonoma County will probably feel a little bit more like home. Finally, it's hard to have a conversation with someone who's looking to move to wine country and for the subject of fires and insurance not to come up. Of course, both Sonoma and Napa have had their fair share of fires since 2017. And as, where, and as with anywhere in California, nowhere is immune from being impacted. However, historically, areas to the west of 101 have been impacted less because of the cooler climates. So for anyone who's looking to be in an area that hasn't been impacted, then Sonoma County will definitely have more options because of the coastal fog that envelops the west of the county. That being said, regardless of where you live, the fire safety procedures and communication are a thousand times better than they were pre-2017. So while there were no guarantees you know, about your property, there is no longer any reason to fear for your personal safety. And for me, that's the biggest single thing. 
I mean, obviously, it'd be devastating to lose your home, but it's more important to know that you and your family are going to be safe. I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I've I've had a house in Sonoma County for 10 years and lived here for over five, and it's definitely my favourite choice. So if you made it to this point in the video, there's a good chance that you're thinking about buying your next home, investing in this area, buying a second home, or selling your current one. We'd love to be your real estate resource of choice. Just email me at david at Brewington Hargreaves to get started. Our team's the number one team in Sonoma County with over 70 families that we helped last year with nearly $18 million in transactions. So whether you're wanting a second home or a vacation rental, or if you need to get inside access to new homes being developed, if you want updates on the homes coming in the market, just get in touch and we we'll, can give you everything that you need. And hey, before you go, if you like this video, you'll love my video about everything you need to know before deciding to move to Sonoma County. There, I'll break down everything you need to know about the different areas, what it's like living there, and way more. So make sure to check it out. See you in the next video.